morning. We are going to discuss the question that has vexed man regarding his lawn equipment since, well, I'm going to say probably the late 80s, early 90s. Uh, the, these problems weren't much of a problem before that because of uh, we didn't have oxygenated fuel with ethanol in it. And that question is, why won't my lawnmower start in the, in the springtime? And I'll just jump to the, uh, straight to the punchline. Uh, the number one reason is you're lazy. And uh, before someone gets all angry with me, um, I was just as lazy as many of you are, or were, or will be. And every spring I'd bring out my lawnmower, even though I live in a very warm state. Uh, during the winter, even though we don't get snow, my lawn doesn't grow unless I plant a winter lawn. Which is kind of a silly idea, but people do it here. They plant grass that grows in the winter time. Anyways, so there are multiple reasons why your lawn mower or lawn equipment doesn't start in the springtime. And most of them have to do with terrible or complete lack of maintenance and laziness on the part of the owner in not winterizing his equipment. So we'll start off with winterizing your equipment. The, the thing that you really, really absolutely should do every fall, right at the end of the last time you cut your yard and you know it isn't gonna grow anymore, is to winterize your lawn equipment and the simple way to do that is you I what I do now is I take my lawnmower I bring it in I drain out all the gas as much as I can by just dumping it out or I use a siphon I have a uh, uh, an oil changing siphon and I use that to suck the gas any the gasoline out or any remaining gasoline out and then I run the mower until it completely runs out of gas. This does a couple of things. Number one, it you know it gets the last little bit of gas out of the carburetor, and number two, it you know kind of mixes up the oil because the, I'm going to change the oil. Uh, most of the time, I don't change the oil in the summer in my lawnmower. I just check it every month or so, add some if needed. Most of the time, I don't need to add any and uh, so I jump I dump out all the gas I dump out all the oil I remove the air filter and re and clean it and if it if it looks like it's in reasonably good condition and I can get most of the dirt out and the inside of the uh, filter is clean then what I'll do is I'll just pound all the dirt out of it, blow it out with air off from the back side and stick it back in. If the inside is dirty, I will just replace it. And if there's a pre-filter, I'll clean that out. Um, you would be surprised at how incredibly clogged these filters get. I have picked up lawn mowers that people have uh, donated to Goodwill or left down the street or for or whatever and they were absolutely the, the the air filters in almost every case were completely packed how the lawnmower was working or starting I don't know um, this is for a, a modern Briggs and Stratton I believe it's a quantum engine and this is for an older Tecumseh uh, these are not very good filters, but with the Tecumsehs, you, you don't have much of a choice. Uh, these are, are kind of throwaway. I have in the past 
reuse them, but really you just need to buy a bunch of them and the minute they get clogged, toss them. This is a filter from a uh, horizontal shaft engine that uh, was on a edger. Uh, you might call it a go-kart motor. These, you have to take them out and rinse them. Usually they, they, they recommend just soaking them in gasoline and wringing it with gloves on or something and then just wringing them out and soaking them with, until it, they get as clean as you can get them. Then you thoroughly wring them out. Uh, what I usually do is once I've got them as wringed out as I can get them, I wrap them in paper towels and give them a really good squeeze to get the last little bit of, out of gasoline out of them and you just let them sit outside for maybe an hour and they'll completely dry out. You don't have to and then you take some non-detergent 30 weight motor oil and you give it a good soaking and then squeeze out the same way all the excess uh, oil. You, you don't need this thing dripping, it just needs to be dampened with oil. Uh, these are cheap screen filters that you'll see on some equipment and they oftentimes can cause more trouble than they're worth uh, mostly because people put them on equipment that they're not designed to go on to. This is for something where there's your, your uh, your gas tank is much higher than your carburetor so there's a lot of pressure going into this um, but if you have got a problem with a lot of dirt in your and rust in your gasoline besides the fact that you need to clean out your gas tank uh, you can try using these um, stand by a second This is a carburetor off of another one of those horizontally opposed or horizontal shaft engines like you would find on an edger or a go-kart. It's an older model. Um, they don't entirely use these anymore, uh, which is unfortunate because they actually in some ways are, are better than modern carburetors. Uh, the way this works is that you have a gas tank. This thing sits on top of the gas tank and this goes down into the tank. There's a small BB in here and what it does is there's a screen and it sucks. When you start using the engine and it starts drawing air through here the uh, Venturi effect sucks fuel up into the jet and the ball keeps the fuel from flowing out, at least not very quickly. Um, this type of uh, carburetor requires a choke and that's what this is. Uh, you, you pull it out and then it's supposed to hold out then you start the usually what happens with this is you when you uh, engage the throttle all the way see how this pulls forward or pulls out and that engages the choke and that causes more fuel to be pulled into the engine when it first starts and once it starts then you let off and it, it goes back to opened up and uh, it runs at idle. Uh, the issue with these types of carburetors is that the screens can get clogged if you let, let junk get into your and if there's too much water in the tank uh, then it can't suck up enough gas 
to you know eventually clear it. You, your engine can eat a little bit of, of water but if there's just too much in here it'll just cause the engine to uh, to die. So let's see here. This, well, let's go with this first. If you have a tank that has an on-off valve, one of the things that can happen is there's, a, there's oftentimes a screen inside. It's a very fine screen and strangely enough if there's any water in the tank junk can flow can grow on this uh, and or it can get clogged and this can cause a problem with water sorry with gasoline even getting to the uh, carburetor because the fuel has to come in here goes through a hose goes in here fills this carburetor bowl and then that gets sucked up into the engine and if this is choked off or there's water in it then the water ends up in here the same thing happens uh, you know if you have a gas you have a fuel tank water is going to be is going to sink to the bottom of the fuel it's denser than the and then the gasoline it's going to go into the tube it's going to go straight through any valves it's going to end up in your float bowl and it doesn't take a lot of water in this float bowl to kill your engine and when i say kill it just won't start so the symptoms of that are, you know, you pull out the the uh, lawnmower in the spring, you open up, you check it's got fuel in it, you add a little more fuel sometimes, and, you know, if it's got a primer bulb, you give it a good prime, or if it's got a choke, you apply the choke, and it just won't start and it, you just keep trying and it just won't start, it just won't start. What you're doing is you're just you're just drawing pure water up into your into your engine. Uh, what you've got to do when that happens is you need to either remove this, well you have to remove the, the bolt from or screw from the bottom of your float and uh, drain that gasoline into something and you you check it and you look for water in the bottom of it. You'll see it, it'll look like a bubble in the bottle, like bottom like if you have a white cup, a white uh, ceramic cup, you drain it into that you'll see little bubbles in the bottom. Those are those are water. You may have to drain quite a bit of fuel. Depends on how long this has been sitting and how wet your climate is. Um, I don't know if you can see in here. Let's see. There's a red protrusion in there. That is the jet and when you press this primer bulb it actually squirts gasoline up into this chamber and this is the modern day equivalent of using a choke. I, I'll have to tell you if, if given a choice in buying an engine with a choke or one with a primer bulb I would take the choke any day. Uh, chokes uh, <clears throat> work so much better and so much easier to start. Uh, a lot of the if you see a an engine that's sold or marketed as having an auto choke, those are the ones you, you want to get because they have a, a choke that's engaged based on temperature. It uh, has a little bimetal, bimetal strip that's somehow attached to the engine and when the engine's cold it will in, 
engage the choke. It'll close off the choke. And when you go to start it, uh, it, it pulls in extra fuel. And usually an auto choke lawnmower can start in one or two pulls. That's all you need. Uh, the primer bulb ones oftentimes take two, three, five, ten pulls to get them going. And a lot of times, it, one of the problems with it is that the uh, the primer bulb isn't doing anything. And on some of the, I don't have one with me, but some of the newer Quantum engines, the primer bulb is actually part of the gasket behind where the square behind where you, you know you'll have this on the on the side of the lawnmower and then you'll have a piece of plastic and if you pull that off you'll find a gasket and you'll see that there's a channel running through that gasket that goes through a small hole in the uh, carburetor and that is how your primer pushes the gasoline into the into here that can become clogged or if it's loose or torn or damaged it doesn't push any gasoline into the engine and so you're having to just pull and pull and pull until you finally suck enough gasoline into the uh, into the engine to give it so that it starts Uh, another thing that can cause problems is uh, spark plugs. Most people ignore their spark plugs. Um, I always take mine out at the end of the season, give them a good clean, check the gap. Uh, this is an old style gapping tool and you have to check your manufacturer's manual for what size gap but it's usually 30 thousandths uh, which I think is this one this is a used spark plug and this is a new one this one has normal usage it's not it's not too bad. Now, if you're running, um, you know, weed eater, and I don't have a a weed eater carburetor that I can show, but basically the way they work is they're. They're like a float bowl carburetor, but they just don't have the float bowl. And what the primer bulb is, which this is one of the primer bulbs does, is when you push this and it tells you to do it like seven, eight, ten times, whatever it says, what you're doing is you're sucking fuel into the carburetor and you're recirculating it back into the tank. And so what this is doing is making sure when you're doing it 10 times or whatever it says, uh, you're making sure that the line is full of fuel, that the fuel is in the carburetor, and that the outgoing line is completely full. And uh, that helps facilitate its starting. Something that will help you with weed eaters and I'm not going to do a video on this but you can find videos on how to uh, how to adjust the carburetor on a on a string trimmer you'll need a a toolbox a toolkit of like this and what this is, is it has, uh, string trimmers have two screws on them. They have an idle and a high speed screw. And 
every manufacturer has a different oddball shape to those special screws because they don't want you messing with them. There's two reasons they don't want you messing with them. Number one, if you're just fiddling with them, you'll screw it up and make it so it won't start at all or run terribly. And number two, the EPA in the United States has mandated that they only produce a certain amount of emissions, so they tend to adjust the carburetor on the lean side, which is fine, and the carburetor, the uh, string trimmer will probably work great if you were at the exact same altitude as wherever the string trimmer was built. But if you're at a higher altitude, you're going to have a lot of trouble. And my string trimmer was, uh, I think it's a home light, and when I first got it, it was, it, it, I, I, could, I could get it started, but it was always difficult. If it sat for a long time, it just took so many pulls to get it started, and oftentimes I had to use starting fluid on it, just to squirt just to get it going and finally I, I looked at one of these videos on YouTube found went out and adjusted my carburetor based on what they said it took me a couple of tries because uh, sometimes you'll adjust it and it seems like it's fine and then you go to use it again and it, it's it's completely not uh, usually the, the problem is you've either made it way too lean or way too rich so, but once you get it dialed in, uh, my string trimmer now starts in about four or five pulls, whereas before it took like 15 or 20. And that's a huge difference when you're, you're just trying to get some work done and, you know, the stupid damn thing won't start. Um, now, why is your lawnmower or wheat string trimmer or whatever it is not why is it getting water in the tank in the first place well the main reason is modern fuel ethanol uh, before they mandated ethanol. I never remember having troubles starting a lawnmower in the springtime. You just pulled it out, made sure it was full of gas, and started it. I never had to winterize it. I live in Arizona. I didn't have to do anything. But starting about the same time as uh, when they started putting ethanol in the fuel, I started having trouble. I didn't realize that, that was the cause, uh, but I did some research and found uh, some other people that explained it, and the, the basic gist of it is that ethanol likes to, has an affinity for water, and so these gas caps are, are vented. If a gas cap wasn't vented, then the as you used up the fuel, you'd create a vacuum in here and you couldn't get any more fuel out. You, you've got to put air in to allow the fuel to come to come out. So this is an older style and you can see there's a tiny little hole here and there's vents here and it's all designed so that air can come in but fuel won't won't spray out. This one uh, not so much but this is a much older one. So what happens is that as long as you keep using this thing during the summer it doesn't have enough time generally for water to build up in the tank but during the winter with the changes in temperature and humidity that occur 
if this this is not completely full of gas, it will as temperature changes, air will move in and out of this this gas tank. As it moves in and out, it if it's if the air is warmer and the gas tank is cooler, especially with a metal tank, then the moisture will condense on the inside of the tank and eventually it will uh, it's the alcohol will attract it and it will cause it to condense it will just it just sinks to the bottom and all the water goes to the lowest spot and pretty soon you start building up a little tiny puddle of a bubble or puddle of water in here if it's not too big it can go through the system and you just might have a hiccup when you're running but if it's you know if you get too much it will build up to the point that you can uh, it just won't start anymore and you got to drain it drain it out the water now what can you do about it well like I said you you can fill it but there's still a chance that because you can't fill it all the way up to the top there's still a chance that water will condense in here so the best way thing to do is completely drain it or if you're gonna be lazy you can cover this with a plastic bag or plastic wrap or something and then put a rubber band around it to keep moisture from getting in there to keep the air from circulating um, air might still be able to get into the system through the carburetor but it may not be as much it's still a best practice to empty empty all the fuel out of the tank um, so that's it change your oil every every fall clean your air filters replace them empty your gasoline out of your tank oh and don't leave your your lawn equipment outside you're just gonna if it rains or you sleet or snow water will build up and it'll get into it it'll rust it I, I can't tell you how many lawnmowers I've seen in the goodwills around here that are just absolutely sunbaked there have been the plastics destroyed because people just leave their their stuff right out in the sun it it, it it damages the plastic it damages the paint it causes water rain it rusts even if it's aluminum it um, water gets into the system the sun I've seen it where it causes the on the dead man switch or any cables if they're made of plastic if the, the, the coverings of the cable are made of plastic the uh, that plastic will actually shrink from being exposed to the Sun and heat if you have high heat like around here that plastic will actually shrink and all of a sudden your cable no longer when you let go of it it doesn't it doesn't release and your engine won't shut off properly it happened to me so uh, I keep my stuff in the shade in a out of direct sunlight and I winterize it anyways that's it don't be lazy and future you will think past you when you pull it out in the spring put gasoline in it and oh my god it just starts later